The Travel Transformation Podcast is proud to be partnered with Give the Goodness Global, an amazing global outreach project helping families in need all over Southeast Asia and beyond. Please check them out at instagram.com forward slash give the goodness global today. And now on to the podcast episode. Welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, the podcast that explores the life-changing potential of solo travel, intentional travel, and location-independent working. Whether you're an aspiring digital nomad or simply want to boost your confidence through epic travel experiences, I'm here to motivate and inspire you to go after all your wildest dreams. I'm Jessica Grace Coleman, author, travel transformation coach, founder of the Travel Transformation Company, and your host for the Travel Transformation Podcast. Travel changed my life. Now let's change yours. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, the podcast where we talk all things travel and all things transformation. My name's Jessica Grace Coleman, and I'm going to be your host. And today it's going to be just a quick solo episode. I am still in the Basque Country and still right next to a road. The construction work has stopped, but we still have cars going back and forth and quite fast and a lot of trucks as well. So if you can hear that in the background, I'm sorry. I'm just going to power through. This was going to be a quick solo episode anyway, but it's actually going to be an even quicker episode because I just spent ages recording an update to a podcast episode that's going to be coming out soon called The Ballad of Colin the Donkey. I'm updating it as I go because it's a sort of ongoing thing, ongoing saga that I hope to have um, had at least some kind of closure or completion by the time I leave here. I've still got a week and a half left here, but there's all kinds of ups and downs and updates and I've been recording every few days to give an update. So the podcast episode will be sort of happening in real time when you listen to it. It will make more sense when it comes out in a few weeks, but I spent so long sort of prepping for that and recording the podcast and prepping for a meeting to do with Colin the donkey that I've kind of run out of time a little bit and I'm going to try and get this done before one of our family dinners which will be happening soon. Okay so the topic today is why solo traveling doesn't have to be lonely. On quite a few episodes actually I've sort of mentioned it. I've talked about it in relation to my own travels and things like that but I just wanted to do a sort of episode focused solely on this because I think a lot of people get put off solo travel because they think I'm going to be really lonely. They worry that they're going to be alone all the time and also that they'll feel really lonely. Can be the case, don't get me wrong. Sometimes people do feel lonely. They don't make the effort to connect with other people so they are alone and they might give up and go back home. And it's okay if you do that, obviously. You do you. If you try it and you don't like it, it's absolutely fine to call it quits and go back home. But I really believe that solo travel doesn't have to be lonely. And this is coming from an introvert. So I do enjoy my own company. I like my own space. I like booking my own room so I can retreat and uh, recharge when I need to after being around lots of people. And I know extroverts don't necessarily need to do that. They get their energy from being around other people. So it will differ depending on what kind of personality you have. But I really think it doesn't have to be lonely. And there are several things you can do to make sure It's not lonely, but also there are several things that just happen when you're solo traveling, happen naturally, that mean you're not going to ever really feel lonely for too long. And like I say, it does happen and that's fine, but there are ways around it and there's plenty of things we can do and keep in mind as we travel solo. So I've made a few notes and I'm just going to run through them quickly again. I spent too long on the donkey stuff, so I've not got much time here. But um, hopefully you'll still find it valuable and I'll still get through everything I made a note on. So the first thing is that even when you're traveling solo, you're never solo for long. You might get on the plane on your own and like physically travel somewhere on your own. But I mean, you even might friends on the plane if you're that kind of person. I tend to keep to myself on planes. I like relaxing, watching movies, sleeping if I can. I don't sleep that much really on planes, reading and just chilling basically. But some people, you know, strike up conversations with the person next to them and make lifelong friends on flights. So it is possible. But even without that, you meet so many people when you're traveling and especially when you're solo traveling, because I think it gives you that extra push to go and meet people, to strike up a conversation with people. And it gives you a sort of excuse, really, to do that, because if you're on your own in a restaurant or something, 
it makes sense for you to try and talk to people. Whereas if you're in a group of friends, you might not even talk to anyone new the whole holiday. It's that kind of thing. But you meet so many people through traveling, whether you're staying in co-living houses, hostels, if you're on a like a longer group tour, or if you go on like a day tour or an evening tour. I met some great people just on one evening tour that I then hung out with for the rest of my trip when I was in Valencia and Paris. I've talked about that on the podcast. Group tours in general are great for meeting people because you probably get some solo people there as well. And even if you don't, even if they're in couples and friendship groups, families, you can still connect with people and hang out and make plans for the rest of your holiday or the rest of your travels or whatever you're doing. Another point is that as a digital nomad, now roaming free, I have visited friends and family up and down the UK more in the past year since I started this than I have in several years previously, um, not including the pandemic, obviously. It really does encourage you to visit people in faraway places. You are traveling around, you are a nomad. You are expected to go to different places and to go back and see people you might not have seen for years. So it's been really great. I've visited people up and down the country last summer in particular. And the epitome of traveling solo, but not being lonely because you're actually reconnecting with really important people in your life, which is great. Another point is there are so many online groups, forums, clubs, masterminds, courses, communities, all about traveling solo and several of these. And you can use them to meet up with people in different countries. If you're alone, you can use them to ask for help if you're alone. So you never have to feel alone because you know that there's always someone on the end of a message or on the other side of the screen that can help. Some of the good ones on Facebook are the Solo Female Traveler Network. They also have their own community, mailing list, their own sort of forum, I believe. And they have another Facebook group, which is the Meetup group. So you can, that's specifically for meeting up with other female travelers, which is really, really, really handy. I've also recently heard about Her House, which is an app and community. It's kind of like couch surfing, but for digital nomads and just for women. So if you want to, say, go to Austin, Texas, you can search if there are any hosts in Austin, Texas, and it will be women maybe who live alone, maybe who live with other people, but they want to host female travelers in the home and they will sort of look after them, show them around. They can use that as a base to travel. It's a really, really good idea. You have to pay for membership and the membership isn't always open, but I will put the link in the show notes just in case. And I highly recommend. I think it's such a great idea. And the founder seems really, really cool as well. Sorry for the interruption, but I just have to tell you about Jessica Grace Coleman's new book, Intentional Travel Transformation. Boost your confidence, conquer your fears, and finally become the person you've always wanted to be, which is out now. This book is part memoir, part practical guide to help you transform yourself and your life through travel. Learn about Jessica's own tale of travel transformation, read unique transformation stories from the travel buddies she's met on the road, and make your way through her travel transformation framework, a method you can follow to create your very own bespoke travel transformation strategy. Your roadmap you can use to incorporate intentional travel into all your future trips. So, have you packed your bags yet? Because it's time to flip the script on your life and transform through travel. Get Intentional Travel Transformation now from Amazon or head to www.traveltransformationcoach.com forward slash books for more info. And now let's get back to the Travel Transformation Podcast. You can also go to meetup.com. It's not just for when you're local or staying at home and wanting to meet people when you're on the road. See if there are any events you can attend. You can seek out other solo travelers, like if you're staying at a co-living or a hostel, or if you're a digital nomad, you can go to digital nomad events, conferences, and other meetups. And these are great because you're going to meet a lot of people who will share your lifestyle and probably your values too. So you're going to have things in common and there won't be as many awkward silences. There'll be plenty of icebreakers. You can ask them where they've traveled to, where they live, where they're from, what languages they speak, what they do, all that good stuff. You can also even try something like Wi-Fi Tribe and Remote Tier, which is co-living, but on the road. And it's a bit pricier. So I've never done it personally, but I know people who have. And that means you'll be traveling with a group of people and getting to know them on a deep level while working. So it's for digital nomads. But this kind of travel becomes the most sociable, connected type of travel or any way of living, really, that there is. 
you don't connect with people like this in daily life at least I don't like staying in the co-living we have family dinners every night and we often play games we get to know each other we had one that went on for like six hours like three rounds of like prompts that helped us get to know each other and it was really fun and really interesting and I just never do that with anyone back home really your co-workers your friends your family you just kind of hang out and talk about like what you've done or moan about stuff or talk about TV and that kind of thing, which is great, obviously, but connected with people on deeper levels while traveling than I ever have at home. And I think that's such an interesting point and something to point out to people who might not realize that co-livings and these kinds of group tours and group situations where you live with people can be amazing in terms of really, really getting to know someone on a deeper level and feeling like you're a part of a community. And talking of community, when you're at home, whatever that means to you, whether you have a base, a house, a hometown, a home country or anything else, you can be part of a local community, which is great. I love it. But as a digital nomad or frequent traveller, you can become part of a global community with friends from all over the world. And I think that's such an amazing thing to be part of. I always find it amazing, like staying in co-livings, especially Sun & Co, because they have the pop-up, they have the main house. You make so many connections with people. And you hear about stories they have of staying in other co-livings with other digital nomads. And then you end up meeting those digital nomads and you feel like you've already known them because you've heard so many stories about them. There's so many connections between co-livings and digital nomads. And you see them on Instagram in their stories or you see pictures of them and you feel like I came here and I felt like I knew quite a few of the people here, even though I'd never met them, because people I've met through Sun & Co have lived with them at different points at Sunoco and I've heard stories about them and it's a really weird but really cool thing and the world really is very small but it's just such an amazing community to be a part of and it really does feel like a community especially with Sun & Co. Yeah so it's really just like one big family just a bit bigger and a bit more spread out than most. So talking of co-livings loneliness is always a possibility of course and I understand that you can be surrounded by people and still feel lonely. And that is definitely a thing. But co-livings are a great place to surround yourself with wonderful, like-minded people that are on your wavelength and living a similar lifestyle to yours, which I think really helps when you are trying to make connections with people. And honestly, it's hard to feel really lonely when you're living with 10 to 15 other people. And when you're having regular things like family meetings and family dinners and connecting on a deep level, like I said. In this way, I think travel and co-living can actually be a cure for loneliness especially if you keep in touch with the people afterwards and meet up with them again in the future, which is what I've done from my past days. And I'm pretty sure I'll be doing it again with the people I meet here now. There are also some people from here that I know from other places, and I'm already planning on meeting up with them in the future in their home country or mine. Like I say, it's like a global community. And once you know you have that, it is hard to feel lonely as a traveller even if you are traveling alone. And I think that is a wonderful thing. So the next time you suggest to someone that you're going to travel solo or you admit that you'd love to do some solo traveling and they say, oh my God, I'd just be so lonely or I'd be so bored or I couldn't do it on my own with no support. Those are all excuses. They're not true at all. You'll have more support. You'll meet more people. You'll have deeper connections. You'll make more friends. And you will have a wonderful time. And I think solo travel helps you push yourself outside your comfort zone, boost your confidence. All of these are good things. You're not going to get anything bad out of it. And like I say, if you try it and it's not for you, you can just go home. There's no shame in that. So I hope this gave you some value. I hope it encouraged you to try solo traveling if you haven't already done it and if you've been considering it. Sorry, it's a bit shorter than usual, but as I said, I've got important donkey business to attend to. So yeah, let me know if this helped. DM me on Instagram at Travel Transformation Coach or send me an email at info at traveltransformationcoach.com and I will reply. And yes, I always love hearing from you, so let me know. Okay, so thank you for listening. Until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Travel Transformation Podcast with me, Jessica Grace Coleman. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review and spread the word if you have friends or family who also want to transform through travel. For a chance of winning one of my books in ebook form, please review this podcast on Apple Podcasts and send a screenshot or just your name to info at traveltransformationcoach.com or at traveltransformationcoach on Instagram. 
I'll be picking a new winner each month and you can choose between any of my non-fiction titles including Write Your Life, Write Your Year and Intentional Travel Transformation. You can find out more about me at traveltransformationcoach.com where you can also get your free travel transformation guide and until next time I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!